What kind of behavior do you call this? Wait a minute, you stay where you are. This is the kind of behavior I might have expected of you. All I do is leave the room for a few minutes, and what do I find? Confusion, disorder. Hey guys, welcome to a lecture for AP American Government. Learning some ideas about two awesome words, and here they are. Dealignment and realignment. So let's look at these two words and how they're going to appear on an AP exam, and um, some two examples that you can write about. So um, when we're talking about dealignment and realignment, we're talking about political parties and the people that belong to those political parties. Um, generally, when we look at a, at a political party, if you think of it kind of like a, like a ball of junk put together, right? And each crumpled piece of paper forms this big crumpled ball, um, and that is the Republican Party. In the center of that um, ball is the base. It's like the group that ain't going nowhere, the ones that make up the ball. Um, so... Let's say back in the late 1800s, the base of the Republican Party is generally a pro-business party um, and African-American support. African-Americans were freed by the Republican Party, so they're part of that base, as is the kind of laissez-faire manufacturing Northeast base. Um, and together they form the center of that ball. Um, but on top of that, you have other groups of voters. So for instance, you also have... Uh, Let's say uh, northern workers, people that work in factories, they're part of the Republican Party because the Republican Party is the party of the North and that's who won the Civil War and that's why they're Republicans. Um, so they belong to that party, but not for the same reasons that the, the very center groups do. So dealignment occurs when something happens in politics, normally a third party comes up and attracts that clump on the outside to peel itself off. That's called dealignment. So... For instance, the Populist Party in the 1890s, uh, the Progressive Party, these are parties that appeal to that worker. They appeal to that worker because they're pro-union, they're for the eight-hour workday, they're against child labor, they are for government regulation to make their jobs safe so we don't have, you know, huge industrial accidents. They're for basically the government having a role in regulating big business in order to create safe working conditions and a livable wage and, you know, those sorts of things. So when the populists come along, like William Jennings Bryan and, um, you know, big populists, they're attracted to that. So they de-align from that ball, the Republican Party. Realignment is when, usually 10, 20, 30 years down the road, usually the other party attracts them to reattach themselves. So when do you think that would occur? When would that, you know, inner city worker who I ain't going to be a Republican... Right? But he doesn't want to be a member of the Democratic Party. It's still the party of the South and the party of, uh, you know, leaving the Union and the, the party of the Klan. He's not all for that, really. So who comes along and basically is going to, like, ring the dinner bell for that guy? You do! Know, congratulations. It's FDR in 1932, the New Deal Coalition. That's when that uh, former Republican voter gets realigned with the Democratic Party. And over the long run, that's why we see Democrats in northern cities, in New York and Chicago and Boston, and, um, because of that, that realignment of that union worker um, to eventually the Democratic Party in 1932. So let's do another example, and then we're going to shut this baby down. So again, we're talking about movement of voters, um, demographics, political parties, all good gravy for, for the AP exam. Um, so the next concept of the same magnitude, we'd, let's say we'll do the other party. Let's take Democratic voters in the South, right? Now, I hope you don't get offended by my terrible Southern accent, but I'm a Democrat because my daddy and my granddaddy were a Democrat, and we're for states' rights, and we're for, uh, you know, the, 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 the Southern states, and uh, we're definitely for states' rights, and we don't like that big federal government, right? So, um, eventually, that Democrat is going to even stick with the New Deal coalition, even though he's not for a big government, because that Democratic Party represents his interests in 1932. Along with that black guy and along with that city worker, the New Deal coalition is going to provide jobs and um, you know opportunity for that Southern Democrat. So he belongs to the party. He sticks with it. He doesn't de-align quite yet. When does he de-align? He de-aligns right around the 1950s, when the Democratic Party begins to become the party of civil rights. And when that occurs, that Southern voice, right? And I'm, I'm not definitely not saying all Southerners back then are racist, but a, a chunk of white voters in the Democratic Party, those members of the Ku Klux Klan that are in the Democratic Party, 
They're going to have nothing to do with this new Democratic Party that is eventually going to elect JFK and sign the 1964 Civil Rights Act with LBJ signing that. So they de-align the American Independence Party, the Dixiecrats, the you know, 1940s and 1950s. They suck themselves away. De-alignment from the Democratic Party. And then they kind of hang out, and those you know, third parties generally don't do very well for very long. Many of them are single-issue parties or um, just kind of flashes in the pans. Um, and then around 19, what, let's say, we could say 1968 with Richard Nixon, um, he runs a law and order campaign, you know, based on, you know, put criminals in jail and let's give police the power to do their job. And um, to that white Southern voter, that sounds attractive. So they begin to align themselves on law and order in 1968, the silent majority, with Richard Nixon. But it's really done in 1980 when Ronald Reagan runs the Republican Party more into a values kind of um, um, uh, uh, platform, talking about abortion and not gay rights, but that concept of religion and um, bringing that back, traditional values and that sort of thing. And that really tickles the fancy. Did I say tickles the fancy? That really gets the goat. Did I say get the goat? That really realigns, right, that once Democratic voter in the South to the Republican Party. So if you understand those two de-alignment, realignment schemes, whether we're talking about uh, the Republican becoming a Democrat or the Democrat becoming a Republican, both of them have some things in common. They both revolve around some kind of third party. Sometimes I'll explain it like third parties are like an elevator that bring you from one, maybe an escalator, that bring you from one party to another party. But the other idea is, you know, seeing that electoral map switch and how once upon a time, Republicans lived in the North and Democrats lived in the South. And now... Democrats live in the South and Republicans... <gasps> Democrats live in the North and Republicans live in the South. I always messed it up. You just messed it up. All right. We hope that you understand alignment and de-alignment a little better and that you have some great examples to write about on your exam. So uh, giddy up. Go get them. Go do well. Save a neighbor. Rescue a cat. Do good things. 